Hey everybody, Heather Tamerlane here with another Obscurity and Miniature, and this one's not really miniature because you can see we've got our little witch hunter friend standing right next to it. This is quite a large box. This is the latest from Creature Caster, the new Dracon. 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 Whatever you want to call it. Anyway, I am eagerly excited. This just came in the mail, and it is a massive bag of goodies. I have not even previewed it myself, so I am quite excited about this. So, as I've mentioned many times in many videos over the course of hundreds of things that I've recorded, a couple of things are always instant purchases for me, and those are things that have lots of limbs and things that are explicitly reptilian. And our Dracone friend is no exception. So, he is, woo, as I knock the camera here, a rather large six limbed or possibly eight limbed dragon ogre like monster and i'm just pulling parts out try to get to the base and we will eventually take a look at everything all right so we'll keep our friend the inquisitor here and the most electrifying man in tabletop entertainment skirmishing games in the picture and you can just see there is a massive massive pile of stuff so our dragon ogre like friend here the dracon has a big custom 100 millimeter base and i do like the fact that we've got already nice indentations for where his limbs are supposed to rest and i've mentioned this before but it bears mentioning again if it's the first time you've seen any of my videos on creature casters models we do have these slight little mini indentations and for the longest time i could not figure out what they were for until it finally dawned on me when i was putting one of the other models together griping about the fact that i had to pin it oh crap check it out they've already got the spots pre-marked where you need to actually put the pins inside. So if you're going to pin the model together, which with big, huge stuff like this, you probably should. First thing that strikes me is immediately just the quality of the casting. Now, you know, I spend a lot of time building stuff from like Raging Heroes or Kingdom Death. Those are the big two that I really like to build, but also Creature Caster. And the quality on the mold is no exception here. Also Mirrors Miniatures, but I haven't done any Mirrors stuff in a while. You can see all his little scars there on his arms or paws or claws or whatever. I really like his fashion accessories he's got going on with the claws there. Lots of bling on this model. We have the actual torso itself and... Oh, wait, no, that's that's the lower half. Here's the torso. And then here's the second half. He's big. I mean, he's going to be a big boy on the table. No matter what, way better than the Shagath or Shoggoth or Yog sothoth or whatever they have that guy called for, uh, I don't even know what the group's called anymore, the Dragon Ogres and Warhammer. So, as with most creature caster models, we have a choice of optional bits. The first being the weapon itself, we have two main weapon heads. You've got the spear and you've got the axe head halberd. And from the looks of things, if I could find the actual weapon, there we go. The weapon itself, we have the, the half of the weapon, and then the, you can see that there is a hole here and a hole here. So hypothetically, what you could do if you were really industrious, I bet, is work out some way of actually magnetizing both weapon heads and have it totally swappable. What I was thinking is, as a big nerdy Gundam fan, you got to have the double-bladed Naginata type weapon like a Gogug. So he might end up with a... The spear blade on one side and the halberd blade on the other and i don't know we'll see all right so we got that we got part of the tail there we got that big forelimb here and here's the second one as my dog runs over to check out what's going on we have the two hind legs right here we have his actual arms and he's got this really really elaborate looking armor going on there really cool looking reminds me a little bit of our queen of ecstasy in terms of the baroque ornateness going on there i love the head motif going on with the armor as well and it's kind of repeated not only with the weapon heads themselves you see we've got like the dragon head here we've got the beast head on this one but then also on the main armor itself that's supposedly going to go on the front of the body i'm assuming ah there we go like so quite cool quite fancy we have a baggie of stuff. I haven't found the 
tip of the tail yet. But, speak of the devil if I can get it out. Maybe. So we have, I believe this is the tail tip right here, and I believe this is one of the tips of the weapon. That sounds right. I could just be making it up. So that was one of our optional parts. The other optional part is your choice of heads. We have a quite bestial, demonic looking head right here. Not sure if it's hair, horns, or, uh, you know, whatever you want it to be, probably. Very cleanly cast. I'm not sure what's going on on the back of it. Or we have the cool, very ornately decorated helmet. That is very fancy. A curiosity, yeah. Head is almost the size of a human. So this is one big bad dude. I'm guessing he should have some hair. Yep. To go along with this head. And I wonder if there's a spot. Bet if you're really industrious, you could go ahead and magnetize that. I'm lame and I won't. <laughs> so uh you know. And then there's these last two bits here. Okay, these things, parts Y and Z actually, fit into this slot right here on the back of his back. And they go like so, or probably like that would be a better indication, so you can have stumpy little spikes all over his back. Or, if you want to go really hardcore, he actually has an optional pair of wings. And I do really enjoy how Creature Caster puts together the wings themselves. They have a lot of, let's see, you can see there's a slight thin indentation there, and once I remove all the extra stuff, it really just slots in neat and nice. So it's got a lot of extra support that if it was just a one-piece casting, you know, might not have necessarily. And it's got a spot for the pins, even though it's out of focus. You can see it right there. Nothing here, but it doesn't really need it. And I want to say, is there a claw? We have a set of claws. I'm not really sure where these go yet. We'll figure it out. It might be like dew claws or something for the back leg. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Save. Those opposable claws. So, big pile of parts, but I wouldn't have it any other way. That is one thing I've always enjoyed about my creature caster models. So I'm going to stop talking right now because it's about time for me to go head out and get dinner. And I promise I am going to put this together as quickly as I can once we are home, which is hopefully soon because I'm getting really hungry. And I'm going to grab a couple other creature caster and dragon ogre type models and we'll take a look at all of them and see how they compare. Shall we? We shall be back in a moment. All right, folks, we've got our Dracone just about finished here, and I've had to, like, finagle a whole new filming setup just to not irritate the rest of the family while they're doing stuff and actually fit this guy in camera. I mean, he he's just ridiculously big. So I have him pretty much pinned. Um, most of these parts, I'm not 100% sure what we're going to actually use yet. So I've got both of the weapons here. I've got nothing attached. You'll notice. His head is still not glued on. I haven't made up my mind because I can't make up my mind what I want to use him for. So my first thought is, you know, this would be an awesome, awesome demon prince. Especially with the wings on. That's another thing. I can't even decide if I want the wings on. So for the moment, they're pinned. Worst case, I'll just clip off the pins in there and just fill it in. But, you know, let's. you guys can see just how big he is. Now, as I'd mentioned before, he's on a 100 millimeter base. We have a marine next to him, a modern... GW Human from Shade Spire from the God Sworn Hunt, one of Creature Caster's own matriarchs who just looks absolutely minuscule next to this dude. Bloody Bradigan over here in our Witch Hunter, and hopefully I can just kind of rotate this around because I'm too cheap and too poor to have those fancy turntables, but you can see. And again, he's not actually glued in most spots. He's just kind of pinned together because I figured it's a lot easier to actually go ahead and paint him in rather large pieces. So as I mentioned before, I don't actually have the wings glued on yet. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use them. So my first thought was just go ahead, use him as a big reptile because it was very similar in theory to me of Darkland's own Arate Maraur, who is one of the Gryffindor, I don't know what they're called, Dragon Ogre guys. 
So you can see our Dracone here has quite a bit of height on him. And volume, I mean, honestly, I've always liked this sculpt here from Darklands, but he feels almost scrawny compared to the bulk that our Dracone is carrying with him here. And even without the wings, I think the wings do definitely give him a bit more depth and volume. Regardless, funny enough, uh, Mears actually makes a Bane Legions version where they replaced bits of the top half of our Dragon Ogre friend here with more traditional monster parts in a big giant club and an armored head. So if you wanted to go like with a giant Chaos Warrior. So as I was saying, my thought, oh, and then I had another of the... They're not Dindrags, but even even this guy, and this is one of the Fomorian ones, one of the early big guys who's supposed to be on a 100 millimeter base, which I don't have handy, but as beside the point, you know, he's he's still getting dwarfed by this. And he doesn't even have his weapon fully built yet. I mean, if I have his blade on his staff, I mean, it's it's got a couple good inches there. I don't know, I can't make up my mind if I want to do this. Have both the axe and the spear. I'm probably going to go with the spear. And then there's the whole issue of the colors. I'm thinking I might try with what the studio had in mind with the red bottom and kind of grayish brown top. Not sure yet. So I grabbed the Queen of Ecstasy, which because I really like this model and I really need to paint it. And I keep putting it in these videos in the hope that I get off my butt and I actually do something with it. So you can see there. She is a little bit taller, and especially with her head, and if I ever finish her hair spike tentacle things, she's going to have even more height on him. Let's see what else can we grab and throw in the picture. Here's the Lord of Malice, who probably is in my top three creature caster models. I really like this guy. But then again, I like Bellacor, which is obviously a big influence in... Lord of Malice, but just to get a good idea here, slide him over. And why don't we get the King of Pestilence, or the King of Ruin, that's what he is. King of Ruin, one of the other king models that Creature Caster's made. And this dude isn't even a king compared to him, but just the sheer bulk. There's no denying that Creature Caster models take up an impressive amount of space. Speaking of impressive amount of space, we'll throw in just a King of Death model for a good comparison as well. Only because he was handy. Our giant phallic friend, the Sun Stalker. Throw in a couple other models just to give you guys a good idea. Here is Creature Caster's own Lord of Pestilence, who is so small that he can barely. I've got to really move things around to get him in the frame. Yeah. And he's a good sized model. I mean, you, you've still got the humans down there just getting absolutely dwarfed and zoomed out. They had a Mantic model handy, one of their greater demons does not even come up to his torso. What about if you wanted to use him as a demon prince? That was my next thought. So I grabbed Mortarion. We figured it would be of comparable stature and ability. But again, our Dracone friend here, still not giving him a chance. I should have grabbed Archeon, but he's sadly in a million pieces because I need to actually finish painting him. I do have one other Mirce model handy. And I can't remember his name, but this is one of their dragon ogres. As in a dragon-sized ogre. Ogre-sized dragon? But again, this is actually based on one of their wyvern sculpts that they took off the wings and gave him hands and clubs. And I forgot part of his little waddle thing hanging off there and threw it out when I first built him. But that's beside the point. So, let's get back to our dracone friend. Overall, I feel like for the sheer size, weight, bulk detail quality it was money well spent he's not a cheap model i mean he was like uh, around 100 or so but you know that's pretty much comparable to a lot of the other big bulky uh, creature caster models you're not going to get something i think of this quality for this price from forge world for example i mean so you can see where i actually glued all this part together and it's all pinned in there Again, just the sheer, oh, whoops, we got one pin in and one pin out, oh well. We still have, somewhere nearby, 
I don't know, I still have those little knobby back parts in case I do change my mind and end up wanting to go without wings. And there's the base itself. I think I showed that off before, but nicely detailed. So I don't know. Paint-wise, if I go the Demon Prince route, I keep thinking purples. Purples, like a dark purple bottom with like a light purple top and use the head. But then I keep thinking Legion of Everblight. And I know that Everblight has those uh, Dragon Ogre type dudes because they had the one Warcaster guy who started off as an armored dude and then ended up coming all roided out Dragon Ogre guy as well. Now I kind of want to get him and have him hanging out here. I can just do a whole thing of Dragon Ogre. So I don't know. First thought, dark purple, light purple, white hair maybe, or go traditional bright red, dark reddish, grayish brown for the skin. Like I said, dark red for the scales, black for all the hardened armory bits on there. Let me know your thoughts. Um, oh crap. <laughs> yeah, that's a good save. But overall, really pleased with it. I would like to get this guy painted as soon as possible. So like I said, offer up those opinions. Let me know what you think for those colors. Should I stick with what they showed off on CreatureCaster's site, which I will not be able to do justice for? Or should I go off the deep end and start going with pinks and purples? I don't know. Anyway, really jazzed with this model. Really happy with this model. The only real downfall I'd say of it is the fact that they didn't have a full-on reptilian head like so because then I would have just been in seventh heaven. So, with that said, the Dracone, cool model, big model, expensive model, very snazzy, blingy model. I mean, he does have rings on like a ton of his fingers, on his claws, all over the place. Just overall excellent cast quality, really solid, really happy with it, and really looking forward to getting it painted. So I'm gonna stop talking, and hopefully I can see some comments from you guys below. Uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you all later. This is High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching. Bye bye.